So we're starting to chicken off in the uh, air fryer today. And then I'm going to transfer it into the oven, into here. Just preheating the oven, nice and hot. Get it in there, stir it off nice and hot. And we're going to try and do the roast potatoes in the air fryer as well. Ooh, very nice. One thing's very important though in cooking, crazy star, must have a little, little something. Mmm, life is all better. na niya yung potato. Hindi ko alam nung style nito. So we'll put them in with the chicken once the chicken gets really started nicely in the oven. Made a nice start already, nice and golden, nice crispiness. It's about just over two pounds, two pounds two, so 20 minutes a pound. They'll take about 30 minutes, so another 10 minutes, then I'll put the potatoes in with the chicken. They can cook in the same pan. And we've got the carrots here. I can cook the carrots off. What I like to do is use the same water for all the vegetables. And then later make the gravy with that water. So we're just gonna cook off these um, carrots now. And just really blanch them. Just bring them to the boil a little bit. A little bit of salt in that water to give it a little bit more flavour. And I'm really just going to bring those to the boil and then strain them off again like I did with, the, with those. And then reheat them in the oven just before they go away to the table later. Cheers. Change of plan, as we've got the air fryer, 
and it was too small for the chicken. I'm going to try doing the roast potatoes in the air fryer. So it's already preheated by a bit. So I'm just going to toss them in like so. And then let them go. I've not done roast potatoes in the air fryer before, so this is the first time. So it's an experiment. We're an experiment together. So we'll see in just a little while. <laughs> a cheese sauce. Um, so I need to get the flour out of here. So mix the butter, melted butter with flour to make what they call a roux. With the flour. And then put it back on. This is a white roux, so we're just going to cook it out a little bit so all the starch in the flour cooks out. And then we're going to add milk. It's supposed to be boiling milk, but as it's only a little bit, we'll make sure we'll just use some when this is all made up, you can see. It goes nice and white now. A little bit more. Should really leave the side of the pan when it's ready. Milk ready. This is butter with flour. Mm. A roux. It's called a roux. A roux? Roux, yeah. A roux. French word, roux. Like baby kangaroo, but a roux. R U R O U X. Roux. And this is the basis of all sauces. Velouté sauces, which is. And brown sauces. Now you're supposed to actually add boiling milk, but because we're only doing a little bit, we're just putting the milk in and bringing it to the boil. You need to bring it to the boil and you see what happens. You've got to leave the surface of the pan so it goes all nice and clean. The pan goes clean. See that? Each time. And that means all the milk has been absorbed into the flour. And then let that go a little bit. We can add some more. Leave it to come to the boil. All over. I'm doing this on a fairly hot number, number six. It's working quite well. Now you see the milk's boiling. And then we mix it into the mixture again. It starts to become a sauce, it'll be like a thick sauce now. You see that? Same process again. Thick and elastic -y. And it leaves the sides of the pan. Butter, flour, and milk. Oh. And then add more milk. We're making it into a white sauce, you see. We'll bring it to the boil. Oh. Let's have a look at the chicken how it's doing. Settle down nicely. It's going quite quite fiercely in there. But it's nice and golden all over. See that? Beautiful, huh? Probably turn it down a little bit. It's quite a very hot oven. This it's down to 150, maybe a little bit less. Just so it sort of bakes nice and slowly now, rather than goes crazy. Smooth. In the big kitchen they would do this process with obviously lots more volume, you know, gallons or even pints. And then they would strain it through a strainer afterwards to make it nice and fine and thin. But when you're making smaller ones, there's just some vegetables. And it's starting to do quite nicely in the air fryer. It's good. I'll be back in the Yeah. Good and nice and dry on the outside. Wait for this to come back to the boil. 
garlic, and then when it's the sauce, not yet, but when it boils, we'll let it cook out for maybe 10 15 minutes or so to cook out all the floury taste. So, what we're going to do now is cook off the broccoli and the cauliflower, which I've rinsed over here. We're probably not going to do the beans now. We'll do the broccoli in the pot, a nice big stock. More than two people, really. We'll get these tiny black bits off the broccoli. Not the best broccoli in the world, but it's travelled all the way from Holland. <laughs> I love the broccoli stalks, so. <laughs> we'll keep them nice long stalks. Maybe just cut them down a little bit. Okay, mm. let's blanch up the cauliflower first. Oh, let's leave water going. Put that water back in there. Nice creamy smooth sauce there now. We'll possibly put a little bit of milk in, more in, but for the time being I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna turn it right down to like a two, just to simmer it, cook it out, maybe even a one, just cook it nice and gently for about another 10 minutes or 15 minutes before we add the cheese. Mm. Wow, look how nicely they're coming along. They look really great. Coming along nicely in there. Really nicely. We've got a splash of oil over those as well. And they're doing about one, at 180. And I reckon another 10 minutes maximum will be done. I'm going to turn them down a little bit to 160, just so they fluff out in the middle. And that sauce is doing nicely. Once again, that's going to put grated cheese in that in a minute and put it over the cooked cauliflower and broccoli. Well, that's the broccoli coming along nicely. It's just come to the boil. Oh, sorry, the cauliflower coming along nicely. Another few minutes. It's nice to keep it a bit crunchy rather than overcook. And then we're going to cook the broccoli off, put them into the dish, and then we're going to cover with the white sauce that's cooked just nicely on the back of the stove here. We'll put some nice grated cheese in that in the minois. It's just gently cooking out still. Give it a nice stir to get rid of some of those little bumps in it. It all adds to that niceness of it. Little grated cheese. Some of this nice, I like this yellow cheese, or orange cheese. <laughs> Colour blind, you see. <laughs> you can kind of like use up all your old cheese in the cheese sauce. So I'll we'll keep that for a sandwich later on. I've got some Dutch cheese as well. It's got a rind on it. I'll take that bit of rind off. Quite a hard cheese. Flavour this cheese. I'm going to grate some of that into it. Mix it together. See that grates up nicely. Save that cheese for a nice sandwich. Strain off that collie. Pop it into there, ready for the joined by the broccoli and the cheese sauce and a little while. It's nice and white. What we used to do in the kitchens is to make it even whiter is put lemon juice in the water. And that used to give it a bit of a, a bit of a bleaching. So let's cook off these broccoli. It's, it's a bit of a small pot really but we can squeeze them all in I'm sure. <laughs> put a lid on. Don't need to cook the broccoli so much. Put a lid on. Give that like five minutes or so and we can add that. Probably cooks actually. 
so I might just let them stand. Take it right down. And then we're going to add the cheese to the sauce. Bring it back to the boil in a sec. Well, not to the boil, but just to melt the cheese. Up a little bit to a ball, maybe. And fold that cheese into our sauce. Mmm. You see that gets absorbed into that. So it's a nice thick cheese sauce to coat the broccoli and the cauliflower. Let that cook in there a minute and I'm gonna now this has been doing very nicely in here. Cooked, we might make the gravy in this pan. Looks pretty good, looks pretty cooked to me, but two ways to test. Just to stick a fork into the leg here, into the leg. And if the stuff that comes out is clear, and it's cooked. Pretty clear, pretty good. Let's double check on that side. That's pretty good, I reckon. So, what we're going to do, we're going to let this chicken stand. Use the same plate here. I'm going to take the chicken out of the pan and I'm going to put it to rest upside down on here. Oh, and as we see, we can see that. Look at that. Quite a thick gravy that, so maybe add a little water to bring it down a little bit. That's a nice chicken colour, not too dark. Beautiful. <laughs> Let that cook out a little bit for a few moments while we're getting the carrots. We cook the carrots. Sure guys, eat on a shirt. Carrots, chicken, potato. Potato, potato, potato. Ooh, you see how this has come out. Nice and gratinated. Mmm, au gratin.